Me and my business on Vishwavahini TV. Main purpose of this program is to introduce business leaders, community leaders and other people who have been contributing to make this society a better place, who have been significantly contributing to the members of our community. And this morning we have Priya Jayasurya, a finance specialist in our studio. Welcome to the studio, Priya. Thank you, Vandir. And uh, Priya, as I told you before, so we are promoting local businesses. Yes. And uh, the strength of our community is the strength of our business community. So it's our Edwin. duty to introduce and promote our own businesses. Yes. So you're in the finance industry. Correct. So can you uh, briefly tell us what your business is yep. and you know when you started? Me, yep. Okay, so um, I'm a finance specialist. I look after um, anyone's financial needs, home loans, car loans, um, business loans, um, any asset loans as well. Right. Um, more and more Australians are getting into small businesses these days. Right. So I can look after um, their needs right. if they're looking to finance any assets or yeah. if they're looking like for business small loans. business loans or That's business right. improvement yes. loans. Yeah. And also on more personal basis like home finance and so on. That's right, yeah. So if yeah. a lot of people, um, when they buy their first home, they like to um, to buy a second house um, right. as an investment property. So um, I, I'm with um, Money Crest. I'm a franchise owner. Right. Been with them for almost two years now. So the company's name is Money Quest. Money Quest Finance. And uh, how long have you been operating in Australia? Uh, we, the, so Money Quest is a very old company. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of managers there coming from banking. Right. So each about 40 to 30 years experience. So I got four or five there. So all add up about 250 years um, experience. Right. So I had that's a, a company. Yes. And yours is a franchise, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's right. Right. And where do you operate from? So uh, my franchise is based in Nariwaran. Yeah. Um, all, most of my clientele um, is in southeast. Right. So Nariwaran, Clyde, Berwick. I'm licensed to work anywhere in Australia. Right. There's no restrictions. There's really. no restrictions. That's right. So any, anywhere in Australia. Yes. So let's uh, take an easy one, right? Like a lot of people these days, they're looking to buy homes. Yes. So let's concentrate on the first home buyers mm -hmm. and so on. Now, first of all, why would they come to you? I mean, you're a broker for these finance institutions. Correct. So what are the finance institutions that you deal with? So we got about 40 lenders. 40 um, lenders. We have all the first tier all the big banks, mm -hmm. then we got the second tier and all the other lenders as well. Right. At the moment, there's a lot of new lenders coming into the market. Right. They have very competitive rates. Right. Um, just because they're not, they're, they're not well known because clients don't know them, but they're actually really good. They're there to help you. Right. So as a broker, uh, my job is to obviously get to know the client first, right. um, have a very good understanding what mm. they want to do, what their future plans, not right. just for today, and then fit them into the panel right. and get them, um, get, meet them, well, get them to where they want to be. Right. That's the main advantage rather than going to a bank or a major institution. Coming yes. to you, you get personal advice yes. on how to go about getting the loan and also how to disburse that, right? That's right. So for us, a client is not a number. Mm. Um, for me, I want to have a relationship rather than a business relationship. Right. Right. So from the get-go, I'll get to know them and I'll be with them till the end. Yeah. So I can always advise them and any questions, they can come to me. Right. And I have another group that working with me, accountants, financial planners, real estate. So if they trust you, they it's trust like the... It's like a one-stop shop. Or that's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so Priya, um, what? Uh, so, when somebody comes to you first, mm -hmm. for example, a first home buyer. Yes. Um, why would I mean say? What, what are the things that you look for, or, or how 
how do you, what's the first step? So the process. So the best advice I can give is if you're thinking of buying, yeah. that's when you should be talking to us. Right. Um, then I can have a look at there. So the process is first we look Even at before selecting a house? Or that's right. So if you think, okay, I am thinking of buying a house in another six months or a year, we need to start talking now because lending changes all the time. So I, I will sit with them and firstly look at um, their situation. What's their long-term plan? Are they single? Are they a couple? Have they got kids? So we look at their financials. Um, so the work, uh, the, if they're PAYG or they're self-employed, right. then look at their expenses. Living expenses is a big... When, when you mean, say, they, the finance institutions or the lender? No, I'm looking at the, talking at the, uh, about the client. Right. So it could be a single, one person, right. or if there's a couple, obviously there's two. Right. And if they have kids, so we have to factor everything into the application. Right. So I'm not just talking about today. So I look at another 5, 10, 15 years. Right. What are your plans? Yeah, most of, most of the first home buyers are young people. Young people. All right. So basically, Priya, if when they come to you, mm. so in, say, what are the going prices uh, in, say, for example, if you take area like Berwick or mm. Cranbourne, mm. the base price for a, a small dwelling is around five, six hundred? Initially, I think, so that's a question for real estate. Um, yes. What I would do is if they need to know, first I'll ask what's their budget, yes. because um, it all depends on how much they can borrow. That's yes. their borrowing capacity. That's right. So how do you establish the borrowing capacity? So what, what are the factors? The criteria is we look at their pay, obviously, to start off with. Yes. How much do you earn? Yes. And then your expenses, so yes. living expenses, then your liabilities. Um, right. So your credit cards, personal loans, any car loans, anything that you owe, we need to take everything into consideration. Right. And then we look at, okay, so this is how much you earn, yeah. and this is your expenses, and what assets have you got? Then we can work out their maximum borrowing uh, capacity. Right. So once you establish a sort of a threshold, that is the amount, then you're yep. going to advise the client, now this is what you can borrow. Yes. And that all depends on how much they can repay and That's right. after living expenses. Yes. So that all depends on the monthly, if it is a salaried person, if it is a couple, uh, both incomes. Yes, so we'll add both incomes um, and then they both will have to go on the loan and on the title as well. Hmm. Um, and then, yeah, so if there's two and if they have kids, so we need to, to take that into consideration right. as well. Now, when you take liabilities, mm -hmm. right, what are the main things that you take as the liabilities? So the main thing at the moment, the every lender is looking at your living expenses. Right. So a lot of people um, don't think of this. Yeah. Uh, so we have tap and go, pay and go, all these yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So people just buy things and they tap their card. Mm. So they don't realize how much money they're spending. Right. So all the lenders are looking at their um, their habits. Right. So if you're spending $10 every day for coffees and things like that, yeah. so if you add up 10 times 5 is 50, right. 50 times 4 is $200 a month. Yeah. So people don't realize it. So these are the things that banks are picking up. Um, so at the start, that's when I educate them. So if you're one of those, then we can educate. So this is your spending pattern. So you're looking to get into the market. We need to fix this. So just keep a budget and see where you're spending up. Right. Um, obviously, you have to leave this. We all understand that. But then these things like that, if you can cut back on um, eating out, coffees and things like that. Right. So that's the main thing. So that's thing. the general advice you give, right? That's right, yes. And uh, once you establish that, <coughs> so, for the, so what about things like, you know, if they have been studying further studies, some people may be, uh, they may have a hex. Mm -hmm liability or yeah. debt or I don't know what you got them. Hex, yeah. yeah. Study loan. So yes. those things do you take into account? Yes. So a lot of people think because it's a hex and they can pay whenever, mm -hmm. they they obviously, I think they forget to tell you, right. but no. So the bank can see everything. If there's a hex debt, that we will have to, we have to add that to the loan. And if they go to my gov, if their details are there, right. so that the, any lender will um, will ask a copy of your balance. Right. So it's not how much; it's it's just a balance with anything, personal loans, credit cards. What right. they want to know is the limit. Okay, so if you take a general bank mm -hmm. as a lender, yeah. Now, when you say salaried people, mm -hmm. how do you prove that 
this is my salary and so on. What are the documents that they will need to provide? Yeah, so we need three consecutive pay slips. Um, three consecutive pay, pay slips? Pay slips. Monthly or? So if they're getting a fortnightly, so three. If it's monthly, we need three monthly ones. Three monthly yeah. ones or fortnightly if it is three monthly? Yes, three. Or so And then uh, there uh, there is tax summary as well. Tax summary. Yes. Uh, I mean, that's the obviously in the... The pay, pay slip, right? pay slips, yeah. So if somebody gives you pay slips, that's mm. good enough? That is, so we have to do checks. We will make sure that we'll do our checks, compliance, mm. and then the bank has their own set of checks that they do. Right. So the compliance is a big thing at the moment. Right. So there's a lot that as a broker that I need to check and what the bank will check. So we have to make sure everything's matching and then obviously we can take it. With this forward. recent banking inquiry, Yes. Things are getting a bit harder. It's getting very hard. A yeah. um, lot of people, miss, I wouldn't say missing out. Um, if, they, if they don't qualify, that doesn't mean they can't buy a house. So that's as a broker, that's my job to educate them right. and guide them through to where Maybe they, they can be. adjust the threshold. Yes. Where that's right, yeah. Or move to area where the prices are yeah. lower. Yeah. Now, that's, that's right. the first home buyers and those who are working on a the, permanent mm -hmm. basis. That's right, yeah. Now, if some person owns a business, mm -hmm. a small business. Yep. Now, of course, when you're a business, small business mm -hmm. owner, you may not have salary slips. So how does one prove what the disposable yep. income is? Yep. So for any businesses, so if you're a small business owner, uh, any lender would require their ABN for two years. Yes. And then the BAS. So we can get the accountant's letter or a BAS. And every year, obviously, they do their taxes. Yeah. So we have to prove that. And their profit and loss right. and full tax returns, that's what we are looking at. Because we need to know where you make money and where your money is going. So right. we have to, to make sure that the business is liable. Within right. next two or three years, are you heading the right path or the, the other way? So that's we have to prove that to the bank. Right. So... <laughs>
uh, then CBA. Right. So then we got the second tier lenders as well. They are really good at helping people. So right. like Liberty, Pepper, um, Me Bank. Um, we got so many. I can't really think of them yeah, on my yeah, mind. Yeah. But yeah. So those out of those, I mean, mm. you know, are they all very strict on these uh, criteria and? Yeah. Credit checks. That's right. They're all very strict. They all have their own criteria. So that's where that's that's why. So do the clients have to go and meet with them as well? No. So I'm the broker. Right. So what we do is we sit with the client, um, we assess their situation, right. and then we fit them to the right lender. Yeah. So we do all the work. So the lender takes your word for. That's Good. right, yeah. So that's why we have to um, provide a character certificate for the client. Right. So they want to know that what they're saying is we don't know the client you do. Right. So what do you think of this client? Why should we lend? Because lending is all about risk. Right. So I need to assess all the risk and answer all the questions saying right. I trust the client and this is the client. Okay. And then um, see the other thing is that when when you provide your income or assets mm. and so on, mm. now if you have got shares in Telstra mm. and all these insurance companies and so on, yeah. so all those are taken into account? Yes, so we need proof and those are all your assets. Share certificates yes. or something? Yes, that's right. right, yes. And then all that is lumped into one and establish your... The application, yeah. So we prepare the application um, as a pack. Right. And then once we have everything, every lender has their own checklist. Right. So we make sure that we have everything that we need. And right. then we package them right. and we present it to the, uh, the lender. Right. So they have an assessment team, they assess that. And if they need anything extra, they will come back and let us know. Right. Now, for example, uh, all these people, in, in particularly with small businesses, mm -hmm. what are the other insurance uh, needs that they are looking for, like public liability or... Yes, so you probably, uh, we have to, to tell them um, if something goes wrong, if something goes wrong, how are you going to survive? So we have to tell them what kind of insurance you got. Mm -hmm. um, have you got life insurance, income protection, public liability, and then we need to provide them uh, yeah. proof as well. And also if it is a small company, uh, you know, like maybe a migration agent or, mm -hmm. or another person like that, yep. do they have to provide uh, indemnity insurance? It's, it depends on the lender. So they will have a criteria, so we need to go through the, once we know the product, so yep. I will go through the criteria, criteria and let them know this is the requirement, please uh, provide me proof. Maybe if you have some employees as a small business person, you may have to provide them with uh, workers' comp. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever happens in your business, we have right. to provide the full, full description. Okay, so Basically, you know, a couple of years, it, you know, operating in that mm. area. Yeah. What are the main things that people come up with? I mean, a lot of the time, um, when we speak to clients, um, they, they they don't really tell you their whole story because right. once you go to a lender, and um, if you don't, I'm not going to say lying, but just say if you forget or whatever the reason may be. Right. So if you don't provide them the whole story. After that, it's very hard for you to get lending because right. how they say is the client lied to so us. So basically what you mean is that because you're a broker, you're a more friendly person than a big institution, mm -hmm. we can be open and tell you everything that we know of about ourselves. Uh, that's the, so uh, that doesn't mean that we, we only give the bank what they need. So uh, what we need to know is your whole financial situation. Right. So if you have any credit cards, whatever the reason may be, just we need to know your whole situation so we can help you. Right. So we're not asking anything personal, but anything related to that application, right. we need to know. Right. Yes. Okay, so uh, now for example, there are quite a lot of people make inquiries from us. Mm -hmm. uh, people like s single mothers and mm. so on. Same criteria applies to them, or it's, uh, so are some there any concessions? Some banks do like to um, help them. Mm. So uh, just say a single mother recently divorced, and if they, if she the person wants to keep the house, right. so we can try and get them um, LVR up to ninety five. So that that's the what's the, the LVR? LVR, so that is the uh, the borrowing capacity. Just so mm -hmm. say you want to buy a house for five hundred thousand, right. so we can go up to ninety five. No, I'm, I'm talking about say, for example, uh, 
couple for some unfortunate reason, if they mm. are going to be separated, mm. then the main problem is their dwelling. Yes. So if they come to an agreement that dwelling will be bought by one party, mm. what do they do? Yes, yeah, so we can help them out. There are a few lenders um, looking to help people like that. Right. So there is a criteria. So we still have to be able to pay the loan. So I will still have to go through the normal process, but then we can try and help them out. Then yeah. get them a loan and try and keep the house, and then after some time so we can refinance. But there's a, it's a bit complicated, but we can definitely help them. Can I ask you another question? Mm -hmm. Say, if a person has got a property, yes, and maybe after a few years, yes, there is a growth, mm -hmm. right? So if they are looking to buy an investment property, mm -hmm. can, how can they use that growth on their first property? First property, yes. Yeah. So we can access the equity and then put that towards your investment property. So the e equity is the the growth. Market value of the house now. Yes, that's right. And the amount of loans that you have. Yeah, so it's just say loan is five hundred the property is five hundred thousand. Right. So your loan balance is four hundred thousand. Right. So your equity is hundred thousand. Right. So the lend some lenders will I believe lenders always take eighty percent um, out of that that, that yes. Right. Yes. So that eighty percent is taken as the deposit towards the your investment property. Towards your investment yes. property. All yes. right. That's so. That's how people can yeah. grow their investments. That's right. Yes. Do people yeah. do a lot of things? A lot of people do. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I guess um, if you're looking to to grow your wealth, yes. the property is one of the ways you can do it. So I always advise clients um, try and pay as quickly as you can. If you can, um, if you have extra money, just put to put towards to your loan. Yeah. And so that means if you get a say five hundred thousand loan, mm -hmm. and the repayment is maybe two thousand, I'm just taking yeah. figures. Yeah. If you pay extra, mm -hmm. can that go directly to the the original loan amount, and that, that can be reduced? So it's it will yeah. So that will reduce, and that's if you have a redraw option, you can draw that money uh, towards some ah, right, um, right, right, right. yeah. So depending on the condition of the yes, loan, loan, if you if there is a redraw mm -hmm. facility, if you pay more, you yes. can take it. You can. Ah, yeah. right. And the other advice I can give is um, just say if you take out a loan, um, you can choose weekly, fortnightly, or monthly. So if you go monthly, you're paying twelve payments a year. Yeah. But if you go fortnightly, you're paying one extra payment because there's twenty six yeah, yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. So if you choose fortnightly. 30-year loan, you can pay off in 25 years. Right. So it'll, it'll save you five years. So when possible, I always advise clients to try and pay fortnightly. Yeah. So you so can... there's an advantage yes, in the long term. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But oh. you have to make sure that you not miss any payments. Right. Yeah. Now, the age limits. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a restriction on age when you come to borrowing um, for houses? Yes, and uh, yes. So uh, if you are young, obviously twenty. Um, usually, retirement age is now seventy. Right. Yeah. So if you are fifty, and if you are asking for a loan for thirty years, so that's eight years. You're not going to work for eight years. Right. So we have to look for a loan twenty years. Right. And then the banks are very strict on exit. So they are asking, um, when you retire, how are you going to manage the loan? Because a lot of people think they can use their super. Super is for you to use when you retire. Right. So uh, that's not. So you not can't the use your super to offset your loan. Um, that's what a lot of people are saying, but the banks want to know a bit more because if you use your super to pay the loan, how are you going to support yourself? Right. Yeah. So we have to to sit with the client right. and see. So okay, how, how what is your exit strategy and what 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 are the plans have you got? Okay, Priya, we talked mainly on finance and all these things. Uh -huh. So, uh, what can the community expect from you as a service? Okay, yeah. So, I um, obviously, I was born in Sri Lanka. Yeah. I speak our language um, well. Right. Um, yeah, so I can connect with them. Right. So, if, if any, any client that I speak to, right. I try to um, build a relationship. Right. Not more for business as a personal, yeah. because when you have a a connection it's easy to work with right. so I can get to know them and help them with anything that they want I can answer any questions I mean, the circumstances can change anytime. change that's right yeah so when something changes you know if you get 
Yeah, redundant from your job, they can come to you. That's right. So when it, it, the friendship, not the friendship, the, the business, the relationship doesn't end once we sign the, the documents. Right. It stays till the end. Right. So I want to be their friend more than a business partner. Okay. Just uh, feel free to you know contact me anytime. Any questions? I work uh, twenty well seven days. Um, till late as well sometimes because right. I need to see the clients when that's, they're That's an advantage because, you know, big yes. institutions, you cannot talk to them you after can't. five. That's right. Then, and when you talk to them, there'll be lots of, mm -hmm. you know, telephone and sometimes the phone Transferring. gets answered somewhere else, yeah. <laughs> like and Philippine or India yeah. or somewhere. And you're so just with a you, number? Yeah. yeah, with you, it's always personal it's me? contact. Yes. And we can get in. People can get in touch with you even after hours. That's right. Anytime. Right. So for me, um, client is a client, not a number. Right. So we have a personal relationship there. Right. So I know who's who. Hmm. That's a good thing. That's a, that's a consolation for a lot of people. I mean. That's right. Yes. Because if there's when you speak to someone, if there is a real person at the mm -hmm. other end of the phone. Yeah. It's a consolation. That's right. So that's why I always like to, the first conversation, I'll have a short conversation on the phone. Right. But I want to go and see the client so right. they can see me and I see them. So we know who's who. Right. And once you meet someone in person, right. you know the person and you build a relationship. Because right. over the phone, you don't know who you're speaking to. It's yes. just another voice. Yes, that's true. Yes. Uh, that's, that's one reason, one good reason mm -hmm. why people should come to a broker. That's right. That's right. So we, we don't um, just, we just don't say things just for the sake of it. So we, we understand the client first, um, ask them a lot of questions to understand them, and then we ask them for the next five to ten years, what's your plan? Yeah. So more, we can cater yeah. for the long term. More importantly, when circumstances change, change, they can come to you for advice. That's right, yeah, because um, we don't have the answers to all the questions, because yeah. lending changes all the time. So there's a lot of homework that we need to do. But if they need a lawyer, uh, accountant, financial yeah. planner, we know people, so we yeah. can refer them. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. that's one uh, other advantage is that you, you said you're a, sort of a one-stop shop. Yes. And people not only borrow money, then they will need lawyers and yeah. other... Real estate and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and financial planning. So you, you're in touch with all these people? Yes. Yeah. So i got a good, gr good group behind me. And insurance is a big thing as well at the moment. Because yeah. if you're buying a loan, that means right. um, it's a debt. Okay, Priya, thank you for coming to the studio and elaborating on what people need to know mm -hmm. about borrowing money and also what service you can offer to them. That's, that's the main thing that we are looking for. How yeah. can we help the community? Yes. Okay, Priya, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. So, all the best with your, uh, with your business. Thank you very much. Hopefully, we'll catch up soon and then I can introduce some people to you. Yes, looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.